Technology is evolving at warp speed. Computer chips are getting faster, our gadgets are getting smaller, and digital data circles the globe in an instant. We need a federal government that can keep up the pace. Unfortunately, federal bureaucrats are falling behind and dragging us down. As recently as 2017, the Defense Department was still using floppy disks on some of its legacy systems. Not only this, many in the government still require companies to file paper reports, making information hard to find and even harder to review. Today, we are going to discuss five ways the federal government must change if it plans to lead its people into the future. Number one, close the knowledge gap between technology and government oversight. What happens when technological innovation outpaces the ability of laws and regulations to keep up? Obviously, the public and its welfare are no longer being served. Unfortunately, this is exactly what is happening today. Insiders have long known that many government officials lack the knowledge of understanding these new technologies. But the biggest knowledge gap of all lies in the legislative branch, most notably within the walls of Congress itself. Experts claim that the knowledge gap is growing wider in Congress for three reasons. The first is the accelerating rate of technology. The second is an increase of public appetite for these new technologies. And the third is political inertia. The bottom line is that their knowledge deficiency prevents them from upholding their oath of office, plain and simple. Other professions throughout the world with commensurate salaries as congressional members are required to meet certain standards. So why not Congress? Isn't it time for members of Congress to be tested and held to higher standards as well? Otherwise, how will the knowledge gap between Congress and technology ever be closed? Number two, establish and enforce criminal boundaries for digital fraud. As our digital world continues to grow, cybercrime and fraud is becoming more destructive. While it seems that there's a brand new story every day about cybercrime, what's disturbing is that cybercrimes are actually underreported. Don't believe me? Let's look at some facts. Every 30 seconds, a hacker attacks someone online. Cybercrime generates over one and a half trillion dollars per year, making it very profitable. Most online breaches go unnoticed for over 200 days because cybersecurity lacks the sophistication. 95% of malware is delivered through email because it works. Cybersecurity services account for over 50% of most budgets because they're so damaging. One in 13 web requests leads to a malware of some sort. And how about this? In 2017, one particular virus cost over $4 billion to fix. This list of cybercrime facts could go on and on. Sadly, very few cyber criminals are getting caught and held accountable for their actions. Now stop and think for a minute about the technical knowledge deficiency of our lawmakers that we discussed earlier. Do you really think they're capable of solving cybercrime? Regardless of what they say, cybercrime is getting worse, confirming that the authorities are not even close to solving the problem. Number three, promote and create incentives to bolster artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is the most important technology of the 21st century and one of the most complex. Along with it comes a flurry of forces and undercurrents that must be anticipated and managed. If history has taught us anything at all, it's that civilizations who win the technology race usually dominate the world. The atomic bomb is a prime example of this. The development of AI must be promoted at all costs as it has the potential to influence every aspect of human life. Because of this, the federal government needs to be mindful of the role it should play in this delicate scenario among conflicting ambitions. For instance, some governments see AI as a means of achieving power and control. Others see it as a way of complementing and enhancing their way of life. And then there's the capitalist. Some companies see AI as a means of reducing their workforce through automation to increase profits. Other companies see it as the means of creating more opportunities for their workers. We've already seen many of these forces at work since everyone understands what's at stake in this global race toward artificial intelligence. The federal government will need to be the arbiter and help find a compromise among all these differing views. Time will only tell if our government leaders are up to the task. Number four, embrace and implement blockchain and cryptocurrencies. The meltdown of the markets in 2008 was a watershed moment in how people view authorities in the financial system. An indelible scar was left in their hearts and minds after they lost capital they'd worked so long and hard to save. The creation of blockchain and cryptocurrencies was a direct repudiation of those who operate and oversee the financial markets. After watching corporate executives fill their own pockets and bank accounts with government bailout money rather than taking responsibility for their own company's bottom line, many considered this the last straw. This is why the new generation hates capitalism so much, because they saw its ugly side, and they were old enough to see the suffering within their own households, and they haven't forgotten about it. 
Blockchain technology was a response to the glut and corruption of the 2008 market crash. It offers a complete revamp on how to conduct financial transactions. While it's not easy to understand at first, blockchain offers an alternative to traditional banking and more importantly, puts power and control of transactions back into the hands of individuals and away from banks. Imagine buying a house for just a small fee rather than paying several thousand dollars in closing costs. This is what blockchain technology offers. A long overdue modification of a banking system that has become arrogant and antiquated. Number five, investing in the pursuit of quantum technology. The development of a robust quantum computer has the potential to change the world as we know it. Thus, it remains a close second only to artificial intelligence in terms of most influential technologies. We should also mention that AI is further along in the development process in quantum technology, so it takes precedence. But this has not dampened any enthusiasm in the pursuit of these powerful computers, because everyone knows the impact they can have. Experts believe that one day quantum computers will have the potential to perform incredible feats, like predicting future crimes from criminal data and CCTV, or how about predicting traffic jams, car wrecks, or even the weather with great accuracy. The possibilities are endless. The digital world today is swamped with more data than can be analyzed. These powerful quantum computers will have the potential to put all this data to use. Classical computers use bits in solving problems, which is nothing more than zeros and ones that make up a data stream. They evaluate each potential outcome from which a result is generated. Conversely, quantum computers use something called qubits, which are comprised of atomic particles. Because of their quantum properties, qubits are able to consider all potential outcomes simultaneously. This is what makes quantum computers so much more powerful and faster than classic computers. Presently, we're still a few years away from developing a full-scale quantum computer. There are many companies and nations throughout the world that are vigorously pursuing this. The question becomes how quickly could a bureaucratic government implement the technology for this importance? It remains to be seen. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch our video. We would love to know your thoughts about the federal government and how they view their role in dealing with these emerging technologies. Please give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss future videos. See you next time.